I thoroughly enjoyed Shokigeki no Soma since the first season, and I personally am not a fan of ecchi anime as a whole. Many people ask themselves, me included, why the hell do I love this show? It's literally a show about high school and cooking, and it has a shonen vibe because there are tournament arcs and stuff. What's to love about cooking and foodgasms? I just watched Shokugeki no Soma Season 3, Episode 4, and I have my answer at last. What made me initially watch the show was it was a different take on the whole shonen thing I was used to. There was no one aiming to become the Wizard King, the next Hokage, the strongest hero, or any of that fantasy battle stuff that can literally be plastered upon one another with minor tweaks. It was an original shonen setting with a very original protagonist that kept me enticed for every episode and every time I saw him on screen. He's not the pussy that gets stronger. He's a badass that has to continually fight himself to become the best. And he's also a putz in the good way, being a total piss off to everyone and not giving two shits about what anyone has to say about him. That's just the initial setting. From then on, we have multiple examples of of amazing cooking and amazing food being produced and judges having amazing reactions when they taste this amazing food and these reactions are so amazing in fact that the generally female judges foodgasm their clothes to oblivion so they can metaphorically have their boobs fondled by honeybees to being molested by a squid to becoming sex slaves to black goop. The reactions are wonderful and it is something that kept me excited for a little while as well. This never felt old either because the reactions that the judges have to these foods are based Basically, the reactions any of us would have to an amazing specimen of that sort of food, however, way amplified to the mega extreme. That's one thing I like about shonens in general. That's one thing I love about JoJo in general. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a battle anime that takes the norms and blows them out of proportion in a way that still would make sense toned down. So these over-the-top awesomeness scenes. <laughs> Don't mess up the flow of the plot and result in just making the experience all the more fun. I think Shokugeki has a lot of this within it, and that's why I've called it the Jojo of Cooking on Twitter. Feel free to follow me at Nux underscore Taku. Every arc in the series focused on an entirely different aspect of the shonen genre in a chef school. Being a tournament arc, being a one-on-one -on -one training arc, having crazy exams with the rest of the school arcs, and the like. But I hear a lot of people saying this is a regular shonen anime, it's just done pretty well and it has a food twist so it seems original and everyone loves it when it's just more shonen screwery and look the protagonist won again what a shocker who saw that one coming okay so the plot armor wasn't a super saiyan 12 it was the secret ingredient that he just thought of for his food which manages to blow the panties off everyone in the competition literally and while I do think there is some novelty in the fact that it is a food shonen as opposed to a battle shonen, guys, that novelty ain't keeping you there through three seasons of this stuff, still wanting more all the time. This is a downright amazing shonen anime, and if it would be a battle shonen written by the same writers with the same methods, it would be a damn good battle shonen as well. I realize all this from this episode because I'm entering spoiler territory, if you haven't watched the beginning, I totally suggest you watch it until here because it's a ride you have not seen anywhere else, Soma challenged Kuga in this open festival where tons of people come into their school campus and everyone has their own mini restaurant serving stuff and the challenge was whoever serves more stuff wins. Now Koga has a major advantage because he has old time customers and because he basically has a fleet working for him, whereas Soma wants to beat him in his own game and also picks a Chinese dish to compete. This episode was the deciding factor to me that this trumps almost every other shonen subgenre aside. The first episode of this season was a setup episode, getting the rules to the tournament ready, getting the rivalries of the tournament ready, and getting Soma ready for the tournament. Episodes two and three were Soma failing at the tournament. Like he's done in the past, and like almost every other shonen protagonist does in the beginning of a tournament, where they finally make their grand sweep at the finish to take the lead. It's a cliche point that's maximized to the max as far as the fairy tale Grand Magic Games, which I personally loved, even though it had some issues. That was my favorite arc of fairy tale, just because, hey, it's a tournament arc, and I do like the characters in fairy tale, and it is nice to see the characters you've been with for the last few hundred episodes kick butt together. 
Well, that tournament went the exact same way. In the beginning, Fairy Tail was losing horribly and was expected to be kicked out fairly quickly. But to the point, Fairy Tail went for the comeback and obliterated their adversaries. It's the cliche shonen trope, and it feels good every time. Shokugeki no Soma in this episode four trumps that completely. Because let's be real, everyone watching this show knew that, yeah, he's gonna lose the first two days and then it's gonna be really tough and he's gonna come up with an awesome plan and what? No way, the protagonist actually made a comeback and beat his opponent? No! I mean, that is the shonen cliche. But shonens falling into their cliches is not necessarily bad unless they fail at them. The most perfect examples ever basically just happened, with both My Hero Academia and Black Clover doing a hell of a lot of shonen cliches. However, My Hero Academia seems to have nailed almost all of them, and Black Clover seems to have failed almost all of them making them the two opposites as far as what I'd recommend for shonen anime. Shokugeki no Soma is not like either of the two simply because of the protagonist not being an underdog in his mindset whatsoever. However, the feeling I got at the end of this episode 4 was, to my memory at least, only done once before in my history of watching anime. And that was at the end of the third season of Haikyuu, when the entire team came together to defeat their opponents that they, according to almost everyone, had no chance of defeating. That scene brought tears to my eyes where every member of the team proved to be completely compulsory for their victory where everyone came through at the time they were needed for most resulting in their ultimate victory and me having the ultimate feels attack of last year frankly up there with your name and for totally different reasons in this past episode of shokigeki no soma i was going through the same train wreck of emotions when characters came to help out the protagonist to catch up and surpass his rival koga yes it's cliche whatever but before i express the awesomeness Another flaw a lot of shonen anime seem to have is they bring you a clusterfuck of characters and they're like, okay, we have a billion characters now, we are therefore better. And they will have their few moments to shine and then they will sort of be forgotten about. My favorite examples of this is Lee from Naruto, who in the Chunin exams was my favorite anime character of all time, at least when I watched it. And his fight against Gara was one of the greatest anime fights, at least for me when I watched it at that time. And you know what? Still now. The outcome to that fight had the ultimate feels as well. Gara beat Lee. Lee and his arduous training for his entire life to get to this point, being the ultimate underdog character, yet still losing to Gara utterly. At that point of Naruto, Lee was the most developed character in my mind with a complete story that I was fully invested in. And you know what? It didn't result in the whiny brat asshole Naruto. It didn't result in the emo AF Sasuke either. It resulted in a character who was willing to chase his ideals and dreams and also being a normal human being. He was a support character that I felt the world for. From that point on, he was dropped. His arc was over, we have no more need for Rock Lee, and he remained in the background as some crappy character who maybe killed a Zetsu or two in the war. This is an overdone trope for shonen support characters that comes in one and two ways. Either there's a massive cast, so we feel like they're trying to get us to know them with their quirky personalities, but we don't know them because they're support casts that only had like five minutes of screen time. Or we want to see more of these characters because we love them, but we're not going to get that because we're too focused on our protagonists. After the tournament arc of My Hero Academia, my two favorite characters were Todoroki and Tokoyami. Todoroki, I knew was going to get more screen time. He seemed to be pretty main character-ish, but at this point, I don't know how much more he can develop since he already did what seemed to be his major character development for the story's narrative. Tokoyami barely got any spotlight. When he did get spotlight it was freaking awesomeness and he was never heard from again i mean i'm sure they're gonna get to him in the manga i'm sure they're gonna start slowly developing a support cast but usually it's one of these issues massive support casts with no development or massive support cast with certain characters we love but they're sort of dropped after they did cool stuff i would continue with examples but unfortunately my urge to talk about soma is too strong right now so i'm gonna have to hold up on that the way shokugeki no soma is developing his cast is also freaking awesome we have our central character, Yukihira Soma, who is literally a protagonist that things are pretty much all done right with. He's not a pussy, which is a huge bonus in my books. He is a badass. He is an asshole in the good 
way. Yet, he's not so OP that nothing phases him either. He is a quintessential protagonist for any shonen anime, and frankly, I can't even think of anyone quite like him, since the community apparently isn't looking for this type of protagonist, God only knows why. I understand why it would be hard to write a story for such a protagonist, because of the obvious repetitiveness that it would have to go through, sort of pulling Gokus all the time with, you know, new forms and shiz, but with Yukihira, they do stuff right, and I hope they know when the right time to stop is, and they don't continue stretching it out, giving him ultra chef instincts and stuff, because this is the type of anime that cannot go forever, but will have to stop eventually, and I hope it doesn't screw up when that time comes. Back to cast writing, not castrating, cast writing, I should have been more clear. The show continually keeps building its supporting cast, which is usually quite the issue, but in this case, they keep building as a side focus, never a main focus. If Yukihira fights an opponent, that opponent will exist for the remainder of the series, and that opponent will somehow be changed by this protagonistic aura that Yukihira gives off like most other protagonists give off as well. Or maybe they're changed in some other fashion by some other ordeal they themselves had to overcome. Every character has a completely unique personality and at least one insanely weird personality trait. You will not find a single normal character in the entire cast except for maybe Megumi, and then again that's why she's my least favorite character. Everyone's odd in their own way, and they're embracing their insanity. This gives the cast a Gintama vibe. Gintama is also one of the greatest shonens of all time, is completely hilarious, and has a wonderful cast. Because while we're never forgetting who the core cast is, the rest of the cast exists throughout. And whenever any of them come on screen, all the experience we've had with them in the past comes with them. And <laughs> Okita's here! Or <laughs> Well, Dean is here! It gives the same hype punch, and not a single interaction between the characters in this anime are forgotten. In this simple scenario, we have a non-cliche protagonist operating a place with the Brockatosis character, Megumi. Brockatosis, in case you didn't know, is an anime illness usually found in support characters where they explain obvious shit that the fanbase should know themselves because apparently we're dumb fucks, as shown by Brock himself, as seen here. So, Ash was just pretending to run away while waiting for just the right time to strike. Now. Megumi's the Brockatosis character, and you know what? She does an okay job. She's not wonderful, she's not terrible. And then, all of a sudden, things just come together for the Yukihira booth. There's a character that he's defeated in the past that's defeated Aldini in the past. So when the three of them are reunited in this booth, their few words to each other mean the world to everyone watching. <laughs> Big guys seem to have been hated in their past battles by the both of them, and they're both not hating him at this point are purely from brilliant character writing. In Yukihira, it shows his straightforward personality. If you like cooking, fine, I'll work with you. I respect you for what you are, and I'm more of an asshole than you'll ever be, so come at me, bruh, and I'll be happy to work with this guy. It also won't turn off Aldini, because Aldini has more of a protagonist vibe than Soma does, which makes him a perfect non- cliche rival character for the series. In their single directional rivalry that Aldini seems to think that they're having, Aldini is trying to surpass Soma, and he is the one at the butt of all the jokes. <laughs> Soma stands on top of this pyramid of puttiness, unfazed by any criticism that can come his way. And the reason why Aldini is happy to work with Big Guy is simply because Aldini's grown past his defeat and is ready to move on to another victory. That's the protagonist quality that also many shonen characters lack. Just the three of them here together is enough to make this scene stand out in my books as one of the greatest closing scenes to an anime episode and as a climax to an anime arc. Throw in the meat master in the background with two amazing slabs of meat, ready to go American style because apparently that's what Americans are like in the eyes of Japanese. We're all freaking whores, which is unfortunately not true. She also has her past dealings with Soma entwined in this partnership, and so does everyone in the scene watching them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the gathering of a cast of characters that are not forgotten and that have no forgotten interactions between them, making it feel genuine and freaking awesome. Oh, and just to go full circle, as I was saying in the beginning, the reason why this show is amazing is not simply because we like shonen, this is cooking, it's cooking shonen, so it's technically something new. No, it has absolutely nothing to do with being 
a new version on a cliche crack. It's an amazingly written series due to the fact that every victory possessed by Yukihira comes in a completely different fashion. This does not come from, I have superior cooking, therefore I win. It does not come from a strange experience he's had with someone else making other people orgasm. There's no blackmailing, no surprise challenges, and no handicaps keeping him back. This is the first time he's coming through with a victory thanks to uniting himself and an unpredictable cast of characters that came of their own accord to accomplish pure awesomeness. Ladies and gents, that's why this episode was amazing. That's why this episode was my second favorite episode of Shokugeki no Soma thus far. And that's why Shokugeki no Soma is pure awesomeness. Because it has its similarities to Jojo, and it has its similarities to Gintama, both being two of my five favorite shonen ever. Shokugeki has a lot going for it more than food. I haven't really done this yet, but I'm considering making more analysis videos on the currently airing anime. So of course, I want you to let me know if that's interesting to you in any way, because quite frankly, I want you guys to like it. So, again, let me know if you want more analyses on the seasonal stuff. I'm already working on one for Mahotsukai no Yome or The Magus Bride. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely pick it up. It's worthwhile. I'll link up some other analyses videos or comedy videos on the side so you can know more about me if this is my first video you're watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see all of you next time. Thank you so much for stopping by. Mata o Yukihira Soma. <laughs> 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 <laughs>